Hey, Ty, uh, I feel like the designated uh, starting line of question asker. So, uh, <laughs> it, well, first of all, is, how's Kawhi doing? Is, is he able to play today? He's not playing, no. He's not playing. Um, and I guess, was he able to do anything pregame before you guys determined that? Um, I just got here until there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, starting lineup, and then I'm done. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pat Beverly, Reggie Jackson, Lou Will, Marcus, and Serge. Thank you. Perfect. We'll go over to Law. Good evening, Ty. How's everything, man? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, last time uh, you faced the Jazz, uh, they gave you an 18-2 run early in that first quarter. Um, and I just wanted to know, like, from what you saw from that Jazz team on New Year's Day to now, like, how how do they feel different? Uh, well, 18-2 run, <laughs> a whole different, you know, offensively, but – they just, you know, they do a good job of attacking the basket. They have a dynamic roller in Rudy uh, who puts a lot of pressure on the defense, trying to get behind the defense. And when teams are pulling in, you know, they're skipping the basketball, taking a lot of threes, or they put it back on the floor and make a play for someone else. So um, they have a great team. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on you offensively and then as de defensively as well. So we just got to be ready to play tonight. Thanks, Law. We'll go over to Andrew. Hey, good evening, Ty. Um, Marcus had said after the game against Miami that he felt like this will be a good test to see where you guys are at. Um, obviously, number one in the, in the West is Utah. But because you guys are just down, you're not full strength, I guess how fair of a gauge do you really feel like tonight will be, or maybe Friday night too, will really be for to see how you guys stack up against one of the West's best teams? I mean, it really doesn't matter to me, you know, regular season. You know, we just want to go out and compete and, um, you know, play as hard as we can. You know, the last couple of games, you know, when I started being out, you know, I thought our guys have done a phenomenal job of moving the basketball, attacking the paint, getting guys involved and playing with a great pace. And that's the same thing we want to do tonight. You know, we know they're the best team in the league record-wise, but, you know, that's not going to stop us from playing. And with guys being out, nobody's going to feel sorry for us. So um, we're up for the challenge, and uh, we'll see what happens tonight. And then with, with Nick, um, I know the, the league policy, there's no like, you know, set timetable for how quick a guy has to come back from a concussion. Kind of where is he, where is he at in his recovery? How's he feeling? I'm not sure. Yeah. Thank you, Ted. Yes, sir. Thanks, Andrew. We'll go over to Miriam. Hey, Ty. Um, with Nick, was it, did he, did that occur in the, on Sunday's game against Cleveland? Do, do you guys know like when it happened? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What? What? Okay. And then obviously he just had the headache and and came in and you guys checked him out and here we are. They checked him out. <laughs> <Not even>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they checked him out and um, you know found out you know what was going on. Um, you know we just want to take his time, get healthy, and uh, make sure we follow the protocol. All right. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thanks, Kristen. You can go ahead. Hey, coach. What are your thoughts on the type of player that Jordan Clarkson? has been this year from what you've seen? Um, I thought it started last year. Um, I thought he's been great, you know, having him in Cleveland. And, um, he's one of my favorite guys, you know, came in and worked every single day. His attitude, you know, mild manner, low key guy. Um, and um, just having that experience, I think in Cleveland of having his first chance to play in the playoffs and going to the finals um, was really good for him. And then coming to Utah last year. And um, I think he's the player that took him over the top of being able to come in off the bench and score the basketball the way he's done, um, being efficient, but also getting guys involved. And uh, so I'm just very happy for him. But he's been a, he's been a great pickup for them so far. Thanks. Go over to Far, Bob. Hey, Coach, bit of an unrelated question, but it being Michael Jordan's birthday today, I just want to know if you had a favorite memory as a teammate or as a fan of Jordan. Yeah, I mean, just the first time just having a chance to play with him. You know, I was still a young player, but I was in awe of just, you know, seeing him, someone you grew up um, idolizing, even though I was six foot and couldn't jump the way he did, could do none of the things he did. But he's who got you, who got me involved in the game and wanted to love the game and play the game so much. And then having a chance to play with him was just unbelievable. Um, my favorite moment, just meeting him for the first time, you know, um, walking into that, you know, gym in Arena in D.C., and uh, just being in awe of just meeting Michael Jordan, um, who was my idol growing up as a kid. Thanks. We'll go over to David. Coach, uh, thanks very much. I got two questions for you. One back on Jordan Clarkson. He's got kind of a chameleon personality where he's able to kind of float from one thing to the other. What do you have anything you attribute that to? And then the second would be as you build a defensive game plan to slow down the jazz, where do you start? Um, as far as how he blends in, that's just his personality. He's just a good dude. Um, 
you know, good teammate. You know, he's a great guy all around. So when you're that, you can blend in anywhere. And um, as far as slowing those guys down, you know, offensively, we got to do a good job in the pick and roll. We got to do a good job with our one-on-one defense of not letting those guys create closeouts because when you're playing in closeouts all night, um, they really make you pay and um, they get a lot of threes up. So I think they're shooting, I think, 10 more threes than they did last year. And um, they're feeling very comfortable shooting it. So we got to make sure we do a good job of, of guarding our man one-on-one, but also trying to play the pick and roll two and two two on two as much as possible. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. We got time for a couple more. We'll go to Cam. Hey, Coach. Uh, I got a two questions for you. The first one being one at a time. Is, certainly, certainly. Okay. The first one <laughs> being when you when you prepare for this Jazz team. How much do you look at the time, the previous game you played against them or the last 10 games when they're nine and one? Um, I looked at our previous game, um, what, we, what we did, and uh, we weren't very good offensively. Uh, we didn't play with a lot of pace. Um, I think our offense got better once we got stops. Um, we started switching a little bit to, to, to make them stack, then we got in transition. But um, we didn't have a, a very good offensive game. And, um, you know, so it was early on in the season, I think like six game of the season. And, um, you know, we're, we're a different team now. But, you know, even though we're missing some guys, we're still a different team. Um, and then lastly, for me, uh, your keys to victory, I think you kind of touched on it there with the playing the two-on-two. But w- what would be your keys to victory to beating these guys? Um, like I said, taking a challenge one-on-one defensively, I think, because when you do a good job, if you switch or you play the pick and roll two-on-two, um, they swing the basketball, they do a good job of putting their head down and trying to create some action off the driving kick. So the better we're able to guard our man one-on-one, um, the more we can keep them out of driving kick situation and take away the three-point shots. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Thanks, Cam. Uh, Justin Russo, you can go ahead and close us out. Hey, Ty, how you doing? Good. Um, I know it's hard to basically take one game sample sizes and such, but how much does a game like the one that Luke Kennard had on Monday, how much is that able to help his confidence and kind of keep him aggressive? Cause you've talked about it. And some of the other players have talked about keeping him aggressive all season, looking for his shots and such, but how much does a game like that help his confidence? Um, I think it's, it's big for his confidence. I think uh, he's a great shooter. He's a really good player. And we just need him to be aggressive. And he was aggressive the other night, you know, making two big threes in a, um, down the stretch of that game, which really helped us solidify the win. So just happy to see that, um, you know, he stepped up and took the shots, made some big shots for us. So hopefully this can kind of, you know, jumpstart him to continue to be, keep being aggressive.